So I recently made a video condemning Prince William's statement that he put out recently about the Israel-Hamas war. And the vast majority of people seem to uh, agree with me that his remarks were inappropriate and quite disturbing. But a few people have commented saying that, come on Ollie, his words are actually pretty neutral, pretty balanced, and even as someone that's pro-Israel, they shouldn't see any issue with it because first of all he says too many have been killed now that could just be a reference to yes there are going to be some innocent civilians who are caught up in the war and in the fighting and uh any innocent death and a loss of blood is is too many in in that sense that no one would ever welcome that um and that when he says he wants to see a, an end to the fighting as soon as possible well that could be once hamas are destroyed that's what possible could mean and I'm afraid that I reject this <laughs> because, yes, you could make the case that you could interpret the words if you were careful and very analytical and clinical in a way that might be at the very best neutral. But words have signals. Words give messages. And there's everyone has to know not just the explicit meaning of what they're saying, but what also what what's going to be uh, strongly implicit. Prince William knows that Israel right now is making progress to dealing with Hamas, obliterating them, getting rid of a genocidal enemy in the most precise way in terms of civilian to combatant ratio in all of urban warfare. And they are facing a huge amount of hostility around the world and people saying cease fire now not asking Hamas to cease fire, just asking Israel to cease fire. He knows that's the context. And so in that context, when there's so much um, justifying of Hamas and uh, anti-Semitism and all the rest of it, in that context, where everyone's saying cease fire now, and Israel still needs to finish the job, in that context to say too many have been killed and I want to see an end to the fighting as soon as possible, that gives a very strong, implicit message that what he's saying is, and what he's siding with, is calls for a, 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 a ceasefire. And too many have been killed implies that Israel's gone overboard and that when it, it's actually the opposite, they've, they've been more precise than ever and they have more to do. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you a... Uh, I'll try to explain this point, not just with arguments, but with uh, a, a, a parable. Let's just say that it's World War II. And Britain and the Allies are 70% of the way towards destroying Nazi Germany, which is the right thing to do, a good cause. And imagine if Prince William, or let's say whoever was a prince at the time, put out a statement saying, I think too many have been killed and I want to see an end to the fighting as soon as possible. That would be seen as just so not the, th the thing to say right now and just so... Um, morally out of touch what you say is i'm fully behind the war effort if you're going to make any comment at all and that's what is the moral thing to be saying right now not to start talking about i want to see an end to the fighting and two men have been killed that's just so uh morally clouded if you want to say well the royal family should just not comment fine but to say well he, it would be too one-sided that's very one-sided to make such a comment like that well actually one day ago king charles himself said that Ukraine faces indescribable aggression. He issued a strongly worded message of support for Ukraine and spoke about an unprovoked attack on their land by Russia. He's picking sides there. So frankly, I think a moral and a fair statement, if you had to put one out, would, would be Israel is still reeling from a genocidal attack. We support their, uh, their efforts to target Hamas. Uh, in, a, in a way that's uh, a level of precision that's never been seen before in, in, in modern warfare. And we, and we especially encourage them, given that not only Hamas are planning to do more of what they did, but also because there are over 100 hostages currently being held and abused by Hamas as we speak. And so that's the message that he's sending out. And don't just take my words for it. The Telegraph reported that Israeli officials and chiefs have themselves expressed private dismay at Prince William's words. Now, they're not saying anything publicly because they don't want to start a diplomatic row, but they are completely dismayed at what he said. And it's not just me, but key figures in the British media have also said so. Uh, Charles Moore, 
a senior writer for The Spectator, wrote, I'm going to just say, tell you what he said. I've got it, got it here with me. And he said, in a statement, the Prince of Wales says he refuses to give up on a brighter future for the Middle East. Nobody thought he had given up, so why did he feel the need to say it? His Churchillian reference to the darkest hour does not work. In 1940, the darkest hour was for Britain against Nazi Germany. Now it is for Israel, attacked by fanatical anti-Semites. Churchill did not call for permanent peace, but to fight back. Although Prince William mentions the plight of the hostages, as well as Gazan's need for aid, the objective of his intervention, if any, is to make life harder for Israel. Exactly. Israel, not Hamas, will attract more purse lips of Western disapproval. Exactly. The prince gives no considera consideration to the idea that what he calls the terrible human cost of the war will increase if Israel is balked from pursuing victory, in the straightforward sense of eliminating all serious military presence of Hamas in Gaza. Exactly. All his statement does is undermine Israel's um, progress and Israel's operation. The Prince's statement does not address the problem that so much of the humanitarian work is inextricably muddled up with agencies' hostility to Israel, and sometimes even with Hamas military operations. It reads to me like lines coming from the Foreign Office. The phrase, too many have been killed, has often been on the lips of David Cameron in, in recent weeks, who, by the way, is trying to call for an immediate pause to the fighting. William is being weaponized politically. If you extrapolate Israel's losses onto Britain's eight times greater population, you get nearly 10,000 murdered and well over 2,000 kidnapped. If that happened to us, would the heir to the throne be urging permanent peace with the perpetrators? And now let's watch a clip from Mark Dolan, a senior presenter at GB News. There may well be a case for an immediate end to the fighting, who knows? But a senior member of the British royal family should not be making it. How will his statement be received in Israel? where Jewish people suffered their worst single day of slaughter since the Holocaust, and where over 130 hostages, including women, children and the elderly, remain captive. It might not be his intention, but how will Jewish people living in this country feel to see their Prince of Wales offering what could be perceived as succor to a terrorist outfit in Hamas, who would surely only welcome his latest comments for Israel to drop arms is their plan. So there you go. It's not just me. It's people across the British media who feel the same way, that it was not Im an impartial statement. It was interference. Um, it was inappropriate. And it was morally, um, <laughs> frankly, morally bankrupt statement to make. Um, I'm very careful uh, with my choice of language. Um, and when I get in involved, especially in, in criticising uh, the royal family, which I think can in many ways be a, a lovely part of Brit Britain's uh, political and cultural landscape. Um, but I think he really crossed the line here and therefore we, we have to call it out. You know, the British people uh, and Britain can be a, a, an amazingly uh, courageous and, and moral country. Um, but we also seem to have at times this ability to, uh, in a very polite and proper way, um, be totally... Uh, weaselish in our morality and in our um, inability to just stand up for what is right over what is easy or comfortable or trendy. Um, at, at Britain's best, she as a country stands for what is right and has done in the past. Uh, Britain needs to rediscover that spirit and frankly so does Prince William. I'm Ollie Annisfeld and you're watching JTV.